Hi guys, my name is Charles. I'm one of the servants at South Paws. Um, today we are doing a thyroid carcinoma removal in an, in an ancient little chihuahua uh, presented just with an incidental finding of a mass on the neck. We've done a CT scan which found no evidence of secondary spread to the lungs and uh, the mass was solitary, so nothing on the other side, which is good. Uh, thyroid levels were normal uh, and Blood work just showed very low-grade kidney disease. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. So the biggest prognostic indicator with thyroid carcinoma is how mobile the mass is. So movable masses have a median survival time of about three years, whereas fixed masses have a median survival time of about eight months. Fixed masses, um, often we'd recommend treating with radioactive iodine rather than surgery. Um, and the radioactive iodine can, in some cases, even be effective for metastatic lesions as well. So this is rostral, that's the larynx right there, and this is caudal thoracic inlet back there just to get you oriented. And regardless of if the mass is off to one side, I always go midline on these. It's easier to keep your anatomy straight. And if you don't have a CT scan, preoperatively you're going to want to look at the other thyroid gland as well to make sure that it's not enlarged because bilateral thyroid tumors are 16 times more likely to metastasize than unilateral tumors. That being said, bilateral tumors can still have a reasonably good prognosis. So trachea sitting there and that's the larynx up here. We've got the mass sitting right off midline there, and you can see why they bleed so much. Just so vascular. And because it's a non-functional tumor and the thyroid levels were normal and the contralateral thyroid gland was normal, um, we don't have to supplement this dog with um, thyroid medications postoperatively. Now I do see the recurrent laryngeal nerve sitting right here. So I'm going to try to preserve that if I can. You can sacrifice one of them without any issue, but if we can preserve it, and it looks like this is just that recurrent laryngeal nerve is just kind of floating on top of the tumor. I think we'll be okay to peel it off. So I'm just carefully trying to just elevate that recurrent laryngeal nerve off the tumor. Can I get a, some silk, please? Might flip this Kelpie around the other way. Just so that the handle's not in my way. So I'm just making a little tag with a piece of silk. have urine gently retract on that. So just grab both of those. Just 
go ahead and tug that in your direction, please. Vessel that's traversing the recurrent line drum nerve. trying not to touch the tumor very much, just trying to dissect away all of the connections around it, because these do bleed, and I don't want to make it angry. I've got a big vessel coming in caudally, which would be the caudal thyroid artery. This ligature, ligature. Yeah. Yeah, I will get a new one. It's the first time I've seen one. Uh, ligature just not work. It's not doing anything. Vessel, caudal thyroid. Vessel coming into the back here. Question, yeah. Uh, so we stage just by taking thoracic or doing a thoracic CT scan. We don't grade it because grading is going to be a histological diagnosis and we don't want to biopsy these because they do bleed a lot. So we just make our diagnosis on palpation and then sometimes, like I typically don't, but sometimes people will aspirate them to confirm the diagnosis. But typically all you get on an aspirate, that's esophagus right there. Typically all you get on an aspirate is blood. So that's the esophagus sitting here. And just see how much this is bleeding. Just everywhere I touch it, it just starts oozing the blood. That is carotid artery quite deep there, yeah. And we can definitely sacrifice that. The issue with the carotid, though, is that the vagus nerve is going to be traveling alongside it. So you can see the vagus nerve right there. So that's vagus nerve right next to the carotid. And so we're going to want to definitely avoid that if we can.
Just everything I grab onto just starts bleeding. And I'm being pretty careful here. I've done a lot of these without ligature uh, before I had it, but I don't like to. And it's funny, once you get the tumor out, all the bleeding stops. Tugging that gently there, Bill. So there's vagus nerve. Just sitting right up underneath there. And see the carotid artery just pulsing away right underneath there and again you can sacrifice the carotid but I would not sacrifice the vagus if I could avoid it yeah so as we use cautery it's going to cause direct muscle stimulation it's not that the patient can feel it it's just that the electrical impulse is directly stimulating those muscles. You can see the carotid artery pulsing away underneath there. I don't know if I said that already. Getting forgetful in my old age. Okay, so we have the tumor out now. There's another might be a little extension of the tumor up here. I can't tell if that's muscle. blood vessel, kind of varicosity. I think it's, I think it was just a blood vessel and then this thing here. Alright, and I don't do local blocks on these because I don't want to paralyze the recurrent laryngeal nerve, vagus nerve and such. Just cut off that stay suture that we had or the suture that we had on the recurrent laryngeal. So that's trachea there, that's recurrent laryngeal nerve there carotid artery there and vagus nerve sitting right underneath there and then the esophagus it's right there underneath so that's pretty much it can we get some um, maybe some 40 PDS do we have saline just do a little bit of the saline lavage as well And again, I'm not going to go and look at the other thyroid because I've already done a CT scan, but if I didn't have CT, you definitely want to look at the other side. And probably before you remove the tumor. Because if you've got 
a tumor on the other side, number one, it increases the risk of metastasis, but number two, markedly increases the risk of hypocalcemia after surgery. So it's a discussion that you're going to want to have with the owners prior to removing these things. So we're just going to close the sternohyoideus, sternothyroidus, and then sub-Q and intradermal layers. And I'll leave Ewan to do that. And that's it for me. So I'll just come over and make sure there aren't any other questions. Nothing else, really. Um, so um, thank you very much for watching. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to stream anything else today. I just have to see how the day is going. But I um, hope everybody's doing well and having a great weekend. And I will talk to you soon.